Hey, welcome back to the second part of our series where we're deep diving into the internals of JavaScript. Now, in the first video, what we did is we looked at how JavaScript is parsed and compiled into virtual machine bytecode and how it's finally optimized into the machine code that runs either on your browser or in a backend application such as Node.js. And we got really, really super deep. We actually created a super simple function and then we looked at the bytecode that was generated by the VA engine. And if you wanna get refreshed on the concepts in that video, then a link should be appearing in the top right hand corner of your screen. Now, just to kind of recap where we were, we were just about to introduce the concept of the accumulator. And to do that, we had just created a very, very simple JavaScript function, which really just returned the number five. Uh, and you can see that on my screen just now. And then we had just looked at the generated bytecode, which you can also see on the screen now. And if we look at that bytecode, you can see what it was doing is loading the number five into this thing called the accumulator. And then it was returning whatever was in the accumulator so let's continue on in our deep dive and we're going to find out exactly how the accumulator works and how the JavaScript code that you write ends up being bytecode and code that interacts with the accumulator in the JavaScript virtual machine. So the accumulator is a really old concept. So even if we go back to sort of Turing machines or von Neumann architecture, accumulators form part of that. And, and what the accumulator is, is it's a register um, in which the intermediate arithmetic logic unit results are stored. What, what do I mean by that? So essentially the accumulator is the thing that is uh, really close to CPU memory and it's very fast access. So it's, it's much faster than something like uh, main memory. Um, and therefore when you wanna do arithmetic, any results of your arithmetic logic are gonna be stored in uh, the accumulator. And as I said, in real CPU architecture, I know we're dealing with virtual CPUs at the moment, but in real CPU architecture, the the accumulator register is faster than main memory because it's much closer to the CPU. So that allows to do really fast calculations without going back and forward to main memory. Now that we know what an accumulator is, if we go back to the instruction that we saw before, LDA SMI5, then it's basically loading a small integer, in this case five, or as I just modified it to a second ago, seven, into the accumulator, right? So that's what it's doing. So the number five is gonna be put into the accumulator, it's a load. And then if we think about the next statement, the return, now there wasn't any other statements that form part of that. It wasn't return five, it wasn't return A or anything like that, it was just return. So essentially what a return statement does is it's gonna return whatever value is in the accumulator at that point in time. Now, because we loaded the number five or two seconds ago, the number seven or 10, yeah, then whatever value was loaded at that point is what's gonna be returned from the function. So as I said, the return function is pretty simple. All it's gonna do is return from the accumulator, whatever value is stored in there. So let's go back to my iPad for a second. Actually, if we wanted to, we could probably simulate the accumulator on paper. So let's let's just draw it out. So we've got this function, which is called return five, um, and we've got this register called the accumulator. So I'm just gonna write accumulator here. So we'll put that at the top hand side there. We'll do it as a little table for a second, and then we'll put our instruction here and then we'll just follow through what happens as we do each thing. So the first thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna enter the function. So we've kind of, there's no instructions there, but the essentially the accumulator is gonna be blank at that point in time. The first instruction that we are gonna see, so let's, let's just, we'll just put the word begin there for a second, right? But uh, it's not a real instruction. It's just, we wanna represent that the accumulator is blank at this point. So the first instruction that we have is this sort of LDA. So let's type that in. So LDA, SMI, uh, and we'll put in the number five again. Um, and that means because it's gonna load into the accumulator whatever value we pass through, uh, the accumulator is now gonna be set to the number five. That's pretty cool. And then the next instruction was a return. So we'll put that and it's gonna return five and then we're gonna end. And that's it, right? That's, that's all an accumulator is. It's just a little register, a little number in, 
and then it's gonna pull out whatever's there, all right? That's, if we were doing that as a paper exercise, really simple. And if I wanted to, I could even represent this in JavaScript. So if I just bring up Visual Studio Code for a second, uh, what we'll do is we'll create a new file and we'll call it Accumulator. And we'll just simulate what's going on there. So we'll create a function called return five in the accumulator. Rather than me writing the exact JavaScript code that we did before, what we're gonna do is write in JavaScript kinda what's going on behind the scenes. So in this case, we would have a variable called an accumulator uh, there. And what we're then gonna do is we're gonna put the number five into it. So we're gonna load the number five. So we'll say accumulator uh, equals five and then we're gonna return whatever is in the accumulator at that point. So it would be just return accumulator. So it's a little bit of a weird uh, structure, but that's, that's essentially what's going on. So we always have this accumulator kicking around in our functions. It's always available to us. Uh, when, when we enter the function for the first time, the accumulator is blank, there's nothing in there. The first thing we do that LDA SMI five is we're gonna load the value five in there. So we've always got this accumulator. Uh, and then because five is in there, the function always returns what's in the accumulator. So therefore, because five is in there, it's gonna return number five. So all, all I wanna do now is obviously uh, output the value. So if I just type in console.log and we'll put return five. Yep. And then we will flip across to the terminal and we'll just run node accumulator. And as you can see, it's behaving exactly the same way as the underlying bytecode. Now that we understand what an accumulator is, what we're gonna do is do a couple more complicated things and actually start doing some mathematical operations on it so that we can get a better idea of how it works uh, properly. Now, in order to be able to do that and be a little bit more complicated, we need to introduce a new concept, which is a register. And we're gonna do that in the next video where we're gonna deep dive into what registers are, how they work with the register machine, which of course is the thing that powers the JavaScript virtual machine uh, implemented by uh, the V8 engine, which is used by Chromium-based browsers and of course Node.js. And we're gonna go a little bit deeper in that video and see how the accumulator uses registers to store data from the calculations for temporary usage so that we can interact with it later. See you in the next video.